Good morning. Good morning. We at St. John's here are a Christian community called to worship and sent to serve, welcoming all to walk with Christ and to grow in faith. And that truly is our mission here at St. John. And so we're glad that you're here worshiping with us today as we are now in February. Can you believe that January just went by just like that? And now we're here in February. But we're glad that you're here worshiping with us today. One of the changes that we kind of made is we really want to know that you were here worshiping with us. So we have the connection cards. You see those in the pew that's in front of you, or you can uh, um, do one of those in the back there. If that's the way that you do it every Sunday, great. That's wonderful. But we have another way now that you can do it online as well. So you can take your phone, you can scan that QR code, and up comes this form, same thing that's on the connection card, and you can fill it out that way. Or if you're joining us online, you can do it that way as well. But we really um, use those um, uh, things for not only for prayer requests, but know that you worship with us so we can stay connected with each other. So, so take opportunity either to fill it out um, or you can do it online as well. And so we would greatly appreciate that. As we uh, begin our time of worship today, it's always good that we greet each other. So I invite you to stand and let's greet each other this morning. As we gather here for worship today, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in singing our opening hymn together. You may be seated. to stand. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. 
I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We pause for a moment of silent reflection. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our scripture readings. Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 40. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows on them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? 
The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Speak to God. The New Testament reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel, for if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but not of my own will. I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching, I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I become as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly, I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading for today is taken from Mark chapter one. Immediately, Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That, that evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place. And there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there also, for that is why I came. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We confess together the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again 
according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children forward for the children's message. Good morning, children. Good to see you guys today. So today I want to talk just a little bit about what we just heard in our gospel lesson. And so I actually have a picture up there on the screen where we see Jesus healing. This was the mother-in-law of Peter, who was a disciple. And so it happens real briefly in our text today, but how neat is that, that Jesus came and healed her when she had a fever? Now, how, how many of you have been sick before, like a cold or fever or something like that? I think the flu, yeah, Paul? Yeah, and we spread it around. That's right. We spread it around all the time with each other. And that, but we all have that. We all get sick at times where it sniffles or we get a fever or we have that cold. And who usually takes care of us? <laughs> okay, ultimately Jesus, but in your house, who takes care of you? Who's actually there? Your mom and dad typically do, or maybe a grandma or grandpa or something like that. Someone who loves and cares for you. Who takes care of you? Your fish does? Wow. You know, <clears throat> gotcha. Well, sometimes watching your fish might make you feel better. I can understand that too as well. But yeah, it's our parents or other people that take care of us when we're sick, and that feels good sometimes when people are taking care of us when we don't feel good at all. Now, in the story where Jesus does heal the, his, um, Simon's mother-in-law, there's one little piece, though, I think it's important for us to realize. It was Simon and the other people that were there who asked Jesus to heal her because they cared for her. And it's our families that care for us. And so one of the things that we can do when we're not feeling too well is, yes, we can get medicine, and yes, our parents can take care of us, but, you know, we can also pray. We can pray for those who are sick, and we do that oftentimes in our worship service. We have a list of people who are sick, and we pray for them. But you can pray for the others, too, because that's inviting Jesus to come and be with them. And sometimes we get better from that sickness. Sometimes God heals it. But mostly, we remember that God cares for us and loves us and will be with us even when we're not feeling so well. And so I think that's really neat that Peter, Simon, was inviting Jesus to be with his mother-in-law, just like we can invite Jesus to be with us as well. So I actually got a, a coloring sheet for all of you that you can take. This one is actually based on a Bible verse from Romans where it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of salvation to everyone who believes. And another word we could put in salvation is, it is the power to heal us. You know, not only maybe with our sicknesses, but to heal us spiritually as well, take away our sins, and that's what that means. So that's a, a picture that you can color. So before I hand those out, let's have a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have come to heal us of all the diseases that are there, but most importantly, of sin. Thank you, Lord, that you love and care for us, that you are with us in our time of need, and that you always care for us. Help us, Lord, to pray for others who are in need. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'm going to hand these out to you guys. Make sure you can go ahead and pick those up as you go, and we're going to continue by singing our next song together. <laughs>
my mouth and the meditation of our hearts gathered here today be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today I would like to focus in on that gospel lesson of Jesus coming and healing Simon Peter's mother-in-law as he came to that house, a place of refuge after all the work that he had been doing, all the healing he had been doing, and as it even says in our text that he was at the synagogue that day. The text just before that, the incident just before that, is he healed a man in the synagogue who had been possessed by a demon, kind of a, a um, huge kind of miracle in that sense, or a spectacular type of miracle. And here in our text today, we see Jesus coming into this home, maybe for a time of comfort or being invited in for a simple meal together. But we see this, and just, again, Mark just is, does these simple, simple words. We see Jesus coming to one person, kind of almost this intimate moment that he comes to her when she is ill, when she's dealing with a fever. And we don't know the severity of it, but when you have the story of someone who was demon-possessed and now you have the story of fever, you kind of imagine this is more just kind of a mundane type of thing. And yet Jesus is right there. And he comes to this woman to heal her to heal her, to offer his love to her. Now imagine that moment, that, that tender moment where Jesus, who had been doing all of this work to the crowds and everything, comes to just her and sees her. And not only that, the family obviously invited Jesus to be there with her, and we'll focus on that too in the sense of what our task is, is to invite others. But here in this moment, we see the beauty of God coming to us to individuals, seeing each of us in our own unique needs that we have in the moment. You see, we often picture the story of Jesus and the story of the church as big picture type of story. I mean, we talk about, you know, Jesus ends his gospel of Matthew saying, go to all the world and proclaim the gospel and making disciples of all the nations. And we talk about, you know, sharing the good news with all people and sharing this wonderful message of God's salvation with all. And that is important. But sometimes that big picture is overwhelming. Sometimes that big picture is like, you know, it, it, you just can't fathom going to everybody. But here Jesus reminds us that it's also this one-on-one -on -one ministry. Jesus' ministry is actually filled with those opportunities where it's one-on-one. -on -one. We see the spectacular ones, you know, the feeding of the 5,000, uh, teaching to crowds that were huge, coming into Jerusalem and hearing all of the commotion that's going on. We see the big pictures, but there's lots of times in the Gospels where we see Jesus with one person and focusing in on their particular need. And so it's the Gospel that becomes intimate and special because God sees us and sees where we are at, and sees the needs that we have. And to treasure that, to recognize that the God of the universe cares about you, cares about your everyday needs, as boring as they might be, he cares about them. He cares about the good times and the bad times. He cares about you. And that's what we see in this gospel lesson, that Jesus healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law. One person dealing with the ailments of life, and Jesus tenderly comes and shows love and grace and mercy to her. But then we hear the Apostle Paul. And a beautiful message he has in 1 Corinthians 9, where he talks about that he will do anything it takes to share the gospel with all people. To the Jew, he becomes a Jew. To the Gentile, he becomes a Gentile. To the weak, he becomes a weak. To those who are under the law, he becomes under the law. Those who are outside of the law, he comes to those who are outside of the law. He says, just covering all those bases, he will do all things so that some might be saved. That's big picture thinking, and it's wonderful thinking. That's great thinking. That's what the church is all about, that we would do whatever it takes so that people could hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we could allow others to know the love of Jesus Christ. 
And we need to always keep that in front of us as part of our, our mission statement, that, that we are to, to worship and to serve and to walk and to grow together, and that's big picture thinking. But we need to also think of, well, the individual that's in front of us. See, see the big picture thinking sometimes will leave us with kind of overwhelmed, you know, uh, thinking about all the different places. And, and a couple ways that we kind of go about that. One, we might work a little bit harder. But oftentimes what we kind of do is we kind of say, well, it's so big that, you know, a little bit later we'll get to it. Or if I learn a little bit more, I'll get to it. Or, or you know, when we find that right opportunity, then I'll get to it. Because it's just so kind of big. But again, Jesus reminds us that our ministry is one-on-one -on -one ministry. You know, when we think of the neighborhoods and the communities that we are to go to, it's kind of like a picture like this. It almost seems overwhelming. Think of all the different places that we could go to. All the different places that we can share the gospel. And we know how wonderful it would be to share that gospel throughout all of these communities, all of these neighborhoods, all of these places to go. Or, you know, thinking about all the multitude of people that are out there that, that need to hear about Jesus. For some of us, that creates an ache in our heart that we want to make sure that all people hear that. But many times, it's just kind of overwhelming. But what's important is that, well, maybe we focus in on one-on-one. -on -one. You know, Paul says this, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Big picture... But what I like about this one is that when he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, well, you know, sometimes it's, you know, I know this may sound funny to you, but it's easier to speak to a crowd about the things of Jesus than maybe it is one-on-one. -on -one. Because that's more intimate. And yet what Paul is saying is, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. That one-on-one -on -one is that place maybe we should be first. I get shouted from the street corner, and yeah, sometimes we get labeled as crazy doing that, but that's kind of actually easy in some ways. You do it, and then you go home. But the one-on-one -on -one takes a little bit more effort to get to know that person, to know where they are at, to know what they need, so that in that moment, you can share the gospel with them. And it requires not being ashamed of the gospel almost to be, in some sense, reckless with the gospel. It is that power of God down to one. So who is that one person that you can think of right now that needs to hear about Jesus? Maybe it's someone that you know that has kind of rejected Jesus, and yeah, that's going to be a tough conversation because there are a whole host of reasons why they've done that. Maybe it's just the person who's just kind of <coughs> fallen away from being a part of a community of believers and just, you know, it's just not for them, so to speak. And just, you know, so it's not like they've given up per se, but yet they're not really connected. And so, so you know that person who needs to hear about Jesus, needs to know of his love. And God does that actually through us by sharing our love. But who is that one person that you know and more than likely, if you're thinking about it right now, it's probably a family member or a coworker, or someone in your neighborhood, someone really close to you. Because that's why you know that they need to know about Jesus or to hear of his love and grace and mercy. And so the ministry really is focused down in on that one person. And each of us, sharing the gospel with one person, well, that multiplies the numbers. I mean, remember that Jesus, in this moment, as he was healing the crowds, that was great, but he's healing one person. He brings around him 12 disciples. And these aren't huge numbers. But with that 12, with the ministry of one-on-one, -on -one, it impacts the whole world. So who's the one that you need to share Jesus with? Who is the one that you are not ashamed to share that gospel with because you know it's the power of God to change their lives? Who is that one person that you've been putting off just talking about your faith? 
And we don't actually have the job of changing people's lives. That's the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we back off because, because we might not get the answers that we want or the response that we want. That's really not our responsibility. Our responsibility is just to share what Jesus means to us and the love and grace and mercy that he has for us. So it's kind of like a, a family affair. That's why I like this picture here looking like families, sharing with that one person who needs to know about Jesus. And I like this one verse that Paul had in our lesson today. It says, I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them in its blessing. Again, imagine that one person sharing the gospel with them because it brings blessing. Don't we want to share in the blessings? Don't we want to share in the wonderful things that God has done for us? Don't we want to share in that beautiful message of Jesus? And so we will do what it takes so that the gospel message can be shared. But we start with the one. The one person that you know that you can reach out to. And so I encourage you this week to, to pray about that situation. If you don't know the person yet that you're going to reach out to, pray to God to show you who that person might be. If you know who that person is, pray that God would allow an opportunity for you to share about Jesus. It doesn't have to be any formal type of thing, just a few moments to share what Jesus means to you. Pray that God would open their hearts to be receptive to that. Pray that you would get that opportunity in this week to begin that conversation with that person so that they too can share in the blessings of Jesus as our Lord and Savior. The grand ministry of bringing the gospel to all people begins with one person at a time. Who is your one person? Go and share the gospel with them. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue with the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, awaken in our hearts and minds that urgency and that desire to reach out to that one person that we know that needs to hear about you. Give us the strength and the courage to do that this week and to share the love of Jesus with them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we live in a broken and sinful world where we see the effects of that sin in sicknesses and disease and illnesses. And just as you came to Simon Peter's mother-in-law and healed her, we know and trust that you come to meet people's needs. And so we lift before you now Frank and for Matthew, for John and Karen, for uh, Dennis, for Pastor Ernie Green and Pastor Blaine York, for Phil and for Allison, for Richard and Carolyn, for Karen and for Larry, for Maria, for Tim and Terry and Kimberly, for Doug and for Bill, for April, Larry, and for Mark and Kathleen and Mark. Lord, you know these individual situations. We pray for your comfort and peace, and if it be your will, your healing. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for places of conflict in this world and the devastation we see from war. We continue to pray for the situation in Israel and Palestine and for Ukraine and Russia and all other places where we see the warring factions, the, the sin broken out in ways that is devastating and destructive. And we pray for a peace and reconciliation to come to these situations. A peace that only comes from you. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> Lord, we pray as we face the difficulties of this world and the brokenness of sin, again, that oftentimes brings terror and fear into us. To see the evil that is out there. And to wonder, can we ever escape it? But Lord, you have overcome evil. You have overcome all the worst things in this world and even the power of death. Give us confidence, Lord, to know that in these difficult and dark times because of sin, that you are that shining light in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. 
Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come to your table today to receive a, your body and blood broken and shed for each and every one of us as you come to us individually, as you come to us with your forgiveness and grace. Thank you, Lord, for this gift as we come to your table. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> You may be seated as we continue with the gathering of the offering. I invite you to stand as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For what has been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thanks be to God.
invite you to stand for prayer. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. Again, we're glad that you are worshiping with us today and the opportunity to uh, be a part of the ministry here as uh, in our guiding statement. Worship is one, is one of those important pillars. And so on Sundays and on Wednesdays, we have worship. We also offer it online as well. Uh, but we're glad that you're here. And also an opportunity then that one person that you're thinking about for this week, well, this is one opportunity to bring them so that they can come and hear about Jesus as well. So it's always an invi open invitation to invite people to be here. If you have prayer requests or other spiritual concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Multiple ways you can do that. Every Friday we send out an email uh, newsletter. If you want to be a part of that, check it out on our website or contact our office. Uh, we have a paper copy of that too if you're here uh, at our different worship services. You can pick it up that way. Thank you too for the gifts that you give. Um, God truly blesses each of us in unique ways and with uh, different um, things, especially um, financially, but also in our time and talent. And so using those to further God's kingdom is a true blessing, and so we thank you for that. We continue in our men's group on Saturday mornings. Uh, we're just a little over the halfway point with this first session, and so uh, still more than welcome, uh, gentlemen, if you want to come and be a part of that. And that's going to continue through February 24th. Next week I'll let you know what the game plan is for going on beyond that point. Lent will be here very, very quickly. February 14th, so not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that is the beginning of Lent. This year, our, purpose, our, our theme is Cross Purposes, and so um, that's going to be focusing on Jesus' cross and the different ways in which that can kind of um, give us direction and guidance for thinking about what he has done for us in this Lent season. So that's coming up very quickly. Also, this morning, we have our Sunday school time at 1015 right after this. Uh, for the children, they meet in the cafeteria. For the adults, we normally meet in the middle school wing, but uh, today um, we have uh, some work being done on the different windows in um, that wing and also downstairs. And so we're going to have Bible study in here today. So just for today, just for this week, we're going to meet with the Gospel of Matthew here in the sanctuary. Also coming up this week, um, on Tuesday, is a second of our open houses for our school. And so if you know people who are interested in um, finding a private school, a Christian school, uh, that's a great opportunity for them to come and to hear about what it all involves and uh, questions to ask. The teachers will be here. Uh, Mrs. Gundell will be here as well, our uh, administrator. And so that's coming on Tuesday, um, 6 o'clock, I believe it's when it starts. 6 or 6.30, I can't remember the exact time. It's, it should be in your, worship, or in your uh, newsletter. You can see the time with that. Um, as well. Okay, any other announcements from anybody? Yes, Doreen. The choir will meet in the balcony quick after church. Okay, this right after church. Yep, right after church, um, the choir is going to meet. They're going to be singing a song next week is Transfiguration Sunday. Um, so we're excited, <coughs> excuse me, excited about that. So meet in the balcony. Uh, the stairs right over here on the side here uh, for choir. Um, any other announcements? Okay. With that, I invite you to stand as we join in singing our closing hymn together, What Wondrous Love Is This. Amen. 